Elon Musk, Starlink enables tens of thousands of satellites to send internet signals to Earth directly. Cellular networks will eventually be phased out. Does Starlink have the potential of circumventing China's firewall? That's a very interesting point. China's firewall, or any other country, Saudi Arabia, that、uh, Russia that likes to、uh, limit access to、uh, the free and open internet, is going to have issues. But will Elon Musk allow that to happen? Because of his automobile business in China, I can't imagine at this moment he is willing to upset China so much that he will risk China shutting down his、uh, factory in Shanghai. He would have to actively decide to accommodate them. It's not something that wouldn't be available to everybody by default. At the horizon of 6G, that will fundamentally change the way we connect to the internet. My interview with Greg Autry, clinical professor of space leadership. Business and policy at Arizona State University. We talked about, among other things, the likelihood of this new technology breaking China's Great Firewall. You are watching Zoom in China. I'm Simon Gao. How are you, Greg? I'm doing very good. Thank you, Simon. You know, you are my first guest for this new channel, Zoomi in China. So, welcome and congratulations. Well, thank you. Let's talk about Starlink.、Uh, Elon Musk launched the Starlink project in 2015 as a satellite internet service idea, and in April this year, the Starlink started to sell services to individual customers, and、uh, immediately. It attracted a lot of attention. So, can you tell us a little bit more about what Starlink is really about, and why is it so important? Sure. And to be clear, this idea goes back more than 20 years.、Uh, back in the late 1990s,、uh, a firm named Teledesic and some other startups explored、uh, doing this idea and raised funds, and, and we're preparing to launch a constellation of global internet satellites. The Iridium project provided satellites that provided phone communications to specially large,、uh, specially equipped、uh, mobile telephones around the world. So this idea of communication constellations in low Earth orbit has existed.、Uh, Musk is the one that finally made it happen, and he's just been really good at taking ideas that have been around for a while, whether they were the electric car or reusable rockets or. Uh, constellations of、uh, internet satellites and, and making them happen.、Uh, what Starlink does for us is give access to the internet anywhere on Earth, and by anywhere I mean the middle of the Pacific Ocean,、uh, Antarctica,、uh, the depths of the Amazon jungle,、uh, deserts in Mongolia or the Sahara,、uh, and provides that connectivity、uh, in places where perhaps a disaster has resulted in the disconnection of、uh, the terrestrial internet,、uh, or areas、uh, even not far from our cities that are often disconnected, where firefighters or emergency responders could use、uh, these sort of services. I see, but、uh, Starlink and the company you are talking about. I mean, they, as far as I understand, they changed the infrastructure of、uh, how internet is connected. In that sense, I mean, is five G going to be phased out very quickly? I do think that in the long run, having cables running everywhere uh, to uh, cellular towers that have to be fairly close to the receivers isn't going to be the model that、uh, is going to.、Uh, To get us the connectivity we need globally, I believe we will have satellite directly to our devices as the、uh, the final solution for、uh, tech connectivity. And Starlink is a big step in that direction.、Uh, within my home, I can certainly have a a phone that talks to my Wi-Fi, and my Wi-Fi talks to Starlink, and I'm no longer dependent on my local telephone company or cable provider for for that connection. Okay, so how far away from getting a satellite to communicate to a cell phone directly? My guess is about ten years, but ten years—that's、yeah. a long time. I think so. There's a lot of infrastructure to to deploy there and technology to be proven out. But I do think that the impact of、uh, Starlink on the growth of the 5G network for a lot of purposes will be substantial and immediate because most people aren't really、uh, that far away from a a Wi-Fi receiver, and in this case, Starlink can put the Wi-Fi receiver anywhere you need. 
So right. for instance, if you're on an airplane or a cruise ship, Starlink's gonna solve that problem you have with connectivity uh, and get rid of uh, the poor connections and latency we've all experienced in those settings. We all know that China has been heavily investing 5G technology and Huawei is their flagship 5G equipment company. But now 6G is potentially in horizon. Will China's heavy investment in 5G eventually be a mistake? Eventually, yes. Um, and uh, for a number of different reasons, not just including Starlink. But I do think eventually the satellite connection is going to be uh, what counts and the infrastructure that they're putting in now and a, a lot of different countries will be uh, obviated by that. Okay. I mean, that's the question I should ask you. Does Starlink have the potential of circumventing China's firewall? That's a very interesting point. China's firewall or any other country, Saudi Arabia, that uh, Russia that likes to uh, limit access to uh, the free and open internet is going to have issues. And frankly, even within the United States organizations that would like to either restrict access or, uh, or throttle bandwidth to specific sites will not be able to, to do that when users have access to Starlink. They'll be able to connect to a free and unfettered internet with uh, full speed connections to whatever sites they want to go to. Okay, so that's very interesting. If that's the case, it brings up two questions. Number one, do you think Elon Musk would do that? I mean, will put a Starlink, uh, allow Chinese people to use it to circumvent uh, the Great Firewall? And number two, does China have ways to still block it? Yeah, on the first question, I can't predict specifically, but unless a provider, and whether that is Elon or any of his competitors that might launch similar constellations, notably Jeff Bezos's Amazon Kuiper project, unless they try specifically to accommodate censorship from China or elsewhere, there won't be any. So yes, users will by default be able to carry this device with them wherever they go. Now, will China be able to try to prevent users? Well, certainly I expect they will outlaw the possession of the Starlink or other companies' receivers, the same way that Nazi Germany outlawed the use of shortwave radios by their citizens to, to keep them from getting information from the outside. Okay, but I mean, if that's the only thing they can do, they can, they can all allow it, but there are going to be a lot of Chinese people that will maybe uh, buy a receiver from the U.S. and sneak it back to China. If that's the only thing they can do, is I would say it's not very strong. Uh, I'm thinking about other ways that they can uh, block this. For example, is there any way that they, um, I mean, this, this doesn't have anything to do with uh, China has to uh, allow certain spectrum for uh, starting to 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 operate on because no, this is uh, not interestingly right. in, in the current environment uh, frankly uh, US uh, United States FCC licensing is pretty much the global standard for uh, for spectrum utilization and European companies and what have you make that choice now China can say you can't uh, broadcast or receive into our country and, and we'll have to see how American or European companies react to, to such a demand. Uh, they could also, of course, attempt to block the signals with signal jamming by broadcasting uh, powerful uh, transmissions on the same frequencies. And they could also attempt to track down Chinese users by looking for signals from uh, from their stations and, and you know hunting them down. So I think that those are real possibilities. We'll have to see how that plays out. Right. For Elon Musk, I think because of his automobile business in China, I can't imagine at this moment he's waiting to upside China so much that he will risk China shutting down his factory in Shanghai. What do you think? Yeah, I can't speak to what he will do there. But again, he would have to actively decide to accommodate them. Um, it's not something that, uh, that wouldn't be available to everybody by default. Regarding Tesla, to be clear, Tesla is a publicly traded company that has a board of directors who appoints um, the leadership of the company, including Elon Musk. And he serves at the, uh, at the pleasure of that board. 
So his decisions to, for instance, open or manage a factory there in China are not necessarily only his own. Uh, whereas at SpaceX, he has a private company where he has a controlling interest and the company does exactly what he wants. Uh, that isn't to say he doesn't care what the economic outcomes for one or the other are. And I certainly would expect the Chinese government will use any leverage they can on anybody to, to achieve their censorship and monitoring goals. Uh, but we will have to see how that plays out. I think it's worth noting that the other American car companies ran to China as soon as they could many, many years before Tesla, and Tesla held out and negotiated a much tougher agreement, which, for instance, allows Tesla to actually own their operation in China, whereas General Motors and Ford are minor partners with a Chinese state-owned company and a joint partnership. So I think there's some indication that, that Elon's been a lot smarter uh, about the China market than others, but it's a it's a difficult situation when you have a publicly traded company. Yeah. Who is Tesla's um, biggest shareholder? You know, I don't have that in front of me, but I, I think individually it's still probably Musk, but he doesn't have a controlling interest, meaning he can't on his own make a decision. He can still be outweighed by the other shareholders and the board decisions. I just want to make sure the bottom line is uh, if the Starlink uh, constellation is in operation and a Chinese person gets a receiver, he can connect to the internet within China with the receiver without the government uh, being able to interfere much in theory. Is that right? Correct. Now the current Starlink constellation is optimized for the North American market. So because they haven't launched all of the many thousands of satellites they intend to launch uh, for global coverage, they've launched the first several hundred optimized to serve uh, the, the densest concentration of, of the North American market. Uh, they're launching the other ones now and, and they will end up covering, uh, covering the globe. Um, so at this moment, I don't know how good the coverage is in China, but it likely exists when the satellites are in, in position and by the time in a year or so when, when the full constellation is, uh, is coming to life, uh, there's no doubt that uh, any user that moves their, their receiver should be able to use it unless something is done specifically to prevent them from doing so. Hmm. The next big step is for the satellite to communicate with um, Tesla, uh, with the cars. Uh, directly. So if that's the case, there's no way China can can stop that. And Elon Musk already said, you know, I'm not going to send, uh, let my satellite talk to uh, Tesla cars. But do you think, I mean, what do you think of it? Do you think that's uh, that will hold? I think the advantages of having that connectivity to the car owner are huge. The car will not only be able to upload and download software and communicate uh, important diagnostic information and receive map information and traffic, but it'll also make the car a high-speed Wi-Fi hotspot for the occupants of the car or even that driver anytime he's anywhere near uh, his vehicle. Um, so every Tesla on the road could theoretically expand the internet connectivity to, uh, to the surrounding environment if uh, if the driver chose to allow that, this, that's a huge capability. And to take that away from the Chinese users will be interesting and obvious. Uh, and I think painfully uh, uh, difficult for, uh, for the Chinese government to do that. But we'll have to see what they do. So you said Starlink has a competitor. Tell me about that. So Starlink has a couple of serious competitors. Uh, Jeff Bezos is company Amazon is going to launch a project called Kuiper, uh, which is on a similar scale to uh, Starlink. And then another company already launching satellites is called OneWeb. OneWeb was a UK-US startup uh, that had some support from Richard Branson. The company unfortunately went bankrupt in spring of last year, just about when COVID hit. A Chinese company announced that they were going to buy OneWeb and the United Kingdom government, clearly concerned about this, stepped in uh, and purchased the company very quickly for $1 billion uh, concert with an Indian partner. They obviously did that to keep the constellation from falling into the hands of uh, the Chinese. 
Uh, do they have the same exact technology? They have a very similar technology, but one of the important differences is that Starlink and the other proposed constellations have intersatellite links that transfer your packets from your terminal up to a satellite and then across a chain of other satellites until one of the satellites is above a Starlink ground station where it can connect down to the internet. This is a super important capability because if you're far away from a ground station, for instance, in the middle of the ocean, or perhaps in a country that won't allow ground stations, you'll always get a connection. OneWeb originally planned for these inter-satellite links and then for some reason changed their model so that they could only communicate from your terminal to one of their satellites and back down, and there always had to therefore be a ground station within view of that satellite. This meant that OneWeb will only really work when you're in, you're in an area where ground stations are uh, within several hundred miles, perhaps, meaning that they couldn't provide service in China or Russia, for instance, unless China or Russia cooperated and gave them ground stations. Right. This implies that OneWeb would have to be compliant with the interest of those countries in which it was providing service and agree to connectivity to their version of the Internet, which would likely be both monitored and censored. Okay, so is this a intentional move or it just they don't have that technology or... They originally planned to do it. Nobody seems to think the technology is that out of reach and the benefits of doing that are clear. There was no clear statement of why they chose to, uh, to remove that capability. Many people think they might have done it intentionally to provide access to markets that they believe... Uh, would demand that and that those markets, China and Russia, for instance, would try to keep uh, uh, Starlink and Kuiper out. Right, right. So they will be a, a fierce competitor uh, to Starlink in China's market because uh, the Chinese government will obviously welcome OneWeb over Starlink, right? That would seem to be the case. And Russia has already uh, banned uh, use of Starlink by its uh, citizens for this very reason. Right. But ban Starlink doesn't really, I mean, what does it do? It's what put, if I put criminal penalties on citizens who are caught using it. So, yeah. so obviously, okay. as you've noted, uh, people have learned to, uh, to avoid unjust laws uh, involving censorship uh, for many, many years in, in China and elsewhere. And uh, I'm sure they'll continue to do so. But uh, at least legally, they've uh, they've made that statement. What about Jeff Bezos' uh, technology? Is it similar to Starlink or OneWeb? It's similar to Starlink. It isn't flying yet, though, so it's not an immediate uh, threat or issue. Thanks for watching the first episode of Zooming in China Chat. I'm sure a lot of you are old friends, so welcome back. To those of you who are new to our production, we produce in-depth coverage on current affairs and this new channel focuses on China. We we'll have an in-depth investigative report every month, an in-depth interview and my own analysis every week. Our intention is to bring you the best China coverage on every issue and in every episode. But we need your support to keep that quality going for the long run. You can help us by making a small donation. The donation link is under this video. If you or your organization are interested in becoming a sponsor to the Zooming program, please email us at info at zoomingin.tv. Thanks for tuning in. Please stay well, and I'll see you next Friday when we premiere another in-depth report on whether China's solar energy will become the next crude oil. Goodbye.